Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a review of the La Roche-Posay Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. So many of you have been asking my thoughts on La Roche-Posay, so I thought we would just start off with their sunscreen. And for this video, we will be doing all the things that I normally do for my skincare reviews, so talking through the ingredients, any potential concerning ingredients, formulation, I will show you how it applies to the skin. And in this video, I do two applications, so you see how it looks with one application, two applications, applications and then I apply my foundation on top of it on camera as well so you can just get the full picture for this sunscreen. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this sunscreen and want to see how it applies on the skin we will jump right into it. Before we jump into this review, I want to quickly disclaim I am not an esthetician, I'm not a dermatologist, and I'm not any kind of medical professional. My video should never be a replacement for guidance from a medical professional, and if you have any skin concerns, you should absolutely always set up an appointment with your dermatologist. I do a ton of skincare research, but I never claim to be any sort of medical professional, so let's just get that out there. Okay, let's just start off with an overview of this sunscreen. So this again is the La Roche-Posay Broad Spectrum 50 Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. I get so confused when I'm reading these off because I feel like it doesn't say the name fully anywhere. It's like Face 50 Sunscreen, La Roche-Posay, Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Tinted, Anthelios, I don't know if that's how you say that, 50 Mineral, Ultra Light Sunscreen Fluid. What? <laughs> Maybe that's just a me problem, but I feel like I'm stumbling every time I try to read these because what even is that for a sentence or a title of a product? Okay. On the front of this, it says it has advanced UVA and UVB protection with, it just says plus antioxidant, which is like, what does that mean? Antioxidant, at least one. And then it says it's fragrance free, paraben free, and tested on sensitive skin. Tested on sensitive skin doesn't really mean anything. If you have sensitive skin and you see that on a skincare label, that does not always mean it's going to work for you. You can't really say that ever for a product that it's universally safe for sensitive skin, but they don't even say safe for sensitive skin. They say tested on sensitive skin. So just, I mean, throw that claim out the window. And then this one is 1.7 fluid ounces of product and retails for $33.50, which is definitely very pricey. This may be the priciest sunscreen I've reviewed here on this channel. So if that price point is not an option for you, totally understand. I do have two different reviews up for affordable sunscreen options. So I will put a card for one here and then I will link both of them below. Go check those out if this is just not even in the picture for you. Totally get that. And then active ingredients here. This one is completely mineral, so that is good for sensitive skin. We have no chemical filters. However, the active ingredient in this formulation is 11.01% titanium dioxide, and there's no zinc oxide in this formula. That is definitely a bit of a bummer because zinc oxide is superior to titanium dioxide when it comes to UV protection. So I always prefer to use a sunscreen that either just has zinc oxide in it or has zinc oxide mixed with titanium dioxide or other active ingredients. So that's definitely a downside. And then a couple other claims that they make about this sunscreen that we will put to the test. The first is that it's lightweight, fast absorbing, and has a matte finish. The second is that it is lightly tinted to give your skin a healthy glow. And then the third is that it's packed with powerful antioxidants to protect your skin against free radical damage from UV rays. So we will dive into each of those claims in a little bit, but keep those in mind, remember those. As far as the ingredients within this sunscreen, right off the bat, I'm gonna say I was pretty let down by this ingredient label. You guys know from my skincare reviews, I like to look up every single ingredient to really get a feel for what's going on. And while we do have some good ingredients in here, like emollients that help to soften and smooth the skin, there wasn't anything that was amazing from an emollient perspective. And then the rest of the ingredients that dominated the top of the ingredient label, aside from emollients, were just texture enhancers and silicones. But again, nothing within any of of those categories that was amazing and worth me calling out. So were they filled with a bunch of bad ingredients? Definitely not. But when we just think about all of the amazing sunscreens that I've reviewed here on this channel that have such good skin loving ingredients, I was like, wah, wah. This just, I mean, 
it didn't really have anything in those categories that wowed me. And then this also doesn't have any hydrating ingredients like humectants in it. I typically love to have humectant ingredients, at least a few within my sunscreens because they help to enhance surface level hydration. And I find that sunscreens that have a variety of humectants in them or just some really amazing humectants really help to make my skin look glowy throughout the day. So nothing like that in this ingredient label either. All right, now let's talk about their powerful antioxidant claim. So in combing through the ingredient list, I did see two antioxidants. The first is vitamin E, which is a great antioxidant for the skin. The second is a plant extract called Senna Alata that is known to help to protect our skin against UV damage and also help with our skin's healing process. So while there are two nice antioxidant ingredients within this label, they're at the very bottom of the list. So their claim that this is a powerful antioxidant sunscreen, I'm gonna say I disagree with. Obviously, I don't know the exact amount of those antioxidants that's within this formulation, but when something like that is at the very bottom of the list within like the last five ingredients on the label, that typically means there is a very small amount of that ingredient within the formulation. So this is not something I would rely on for your antioxidant support. I would definitely say if this is your go-to sunscreen, make sure you're using a separate product for that antioxidant benefit because this is probably not going to give you hardly any. All right, so that is it for the ingredient list summary. While there's no fragrance in this sunscreen, which of course is amazing, and there are no sensitizing ingredients, there also just really isn't anything in here that I'm obsessed with. And I have sunscreens that are much more affordable, that are packed with really amazing skincare ingredients, emollients, humectants, antioxidants, and skin replenishing and restoring ingredients. So I'm like, um, but let's talk about the formulation. Let's talk about all of those other things before I give you guys my final thoughts. Okay, so formulation of this, remember they say that it's lightweight, blends into the skin nicely, and dries down to a matte finish. I would say it's not extremely lightweight, but it's also not a thick mineral sunscreen. I would say it's right in the middle, so I will call this a medium weight mineral sunscreen. You guys can see here, it definitely does have that liquidy consistency, but at the same time, I have definitely used mineral sunscreens before that are even more liquidy and more lightweight than that. So when I have tried sunscreens before that have beautiful lightweight formulations and then I feel something like this, I notice a definite difference. However, this is definitely not something I would consider to be Thick. So I still do think a lot of people would really enjoy this formulation. I think it feels nice on the skin. It's just not the lightest weight sunscreen I've ever used. It does blend nicely into the skin. I don't know that it's the easiest sunscreen to blend out. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it doesn't cover my face as evenly and easily as some of my other sunscreens do. I don't know if you guys will be able to pick that up on camera. It's not the worst thing ever, but again, I'm just thinking about some of the other sunscreens that I'm obsessed with, and I just find that those blend out all over my face in a more even way than this one. So I wouldn't say it's the easiest thing to blend out, but it gets the job done. And then as far as the finish, this is not a matte finish sunscreen at all. So you guys can see here with just one application, it does just leave my skin looking healthy and glowy, which I love. I love a good healthy glow. You guys know that. I don't like matte skin on myself, but if you were hoping that this was a matte sunscreen, maybe if you're super oily, it's definitely not. So that was the first application. And then I waited 10 minutes before the second application, which you guys can see right here. And after that, my skin just looked even glowier, even dewier than it did with that first application. So again, definitely not matte. I don't really, I don't know what that claim is about. It's not matte. I have tried very few sunscreens that are fully matte on the skin, like maybe only a couple, and this is not one of them. But if you're super dry, I feel like you would be obsessed with that because it does just leave your skin looking really nice and luminous. And in my opinion, it doesn't look greasy or oily, but if you had oily skin, it might. The one issue that I did find with this sunscreen after that second application is that it started to crease 
on my eyelids and that's actually not a problem that I usually have with tinted mineral sunscreen so that's something I noticed right away and wanted to make sure I was showing you guys of course now I am wearing eyeshadow and the good news is that I didn't have any issues as far as eyeshadow application goes and my eyeshadow is holding up the same as it always would so it shouldn't interfere with eyeshadow application but I know a lot of you guys don't wear eyeshadow especially on a daily basis I mean I don't wear it on a daily basis either so I wanted to make sure to show you guys that because this is definitely not something I would want on my eyelids if I didn't have eyeshadow on top of it because who wants creasy lids you know I mean at least I don't if you do that's fine to each their own and then finally what I know a lot of you guys are interested in is how foundation applies on top of this sunscreen and it applies really nicely on top of it so that was great. I didn't have any pilling, but I did make sure to wait a good 10 to 15 minutes after my second application of this before applying foundation on top of it. I always recommend doing that to make sure that the sunscreen is fully absorbed into the skin and then so that you don't have any issues with pilling. So the foundation that I'm using here is my Lancome Tanti Doll Ultra Wear Foundation, one of my all-time favorites. It's beautiful and it worked very nicely on top of this sunscreen. So no problems with that. And then I'll give you guys a quick close up here so you can see how this is holding up underneath my makeup now. It's been probably at least an hour since I applied that foundation on top of it. You can see I definitely do have a luminous glow to my face. It's not too dewy, it doesn't look greasy. So all of that is great. But my Lancome foundation is actually probably one of my mattest foundations on me. I shouldn't say matte because it's not like totally dry and matte, but compared to some of my other foundations that are very glowy and even more luminous, this one is more on the matte side for me. So I can tell that this is a sunscreen that would not work for me underneath some of my glowier foundations. So keep that in mind. If you want something that works really well underneath a super glowy foundation, it's probably not going to be this unless you're very, very dry. So not something I would use in that way. And then, of course, we have to talk about the level of tint here. So this is probably the darkest tinted sunscreen, I'm trying to think, that I own. Yeah, it's definitely darker than CeraVe. I'll put my CeraVe sunscreen review right here and in the description box below. I definitely think it's darker than CeraVe, and especially with the second application, you do actually get a lot of pigment with this specific sunscreen which I think for some people is a good thing. You can see obviously, again, like I've been doing in all of these videos, my face is much paler than the rest of my body because I have self tanner on my body. So whenever a sunscreen has a good amount of tint to it like that, I actually love it when the rest of my body is tan because my face needs to catch up, if you know what I mean. So I actually really like it that way. And even with two applications, I didn't feel like it was too much color for the situation that I'm in. However, if I didn't have self tanner on or if you're super pale this is going to be too dark for you which is interesting because if you remember they claimed that this is a lightly tinted sunscreen I have a lot of lightly tinted sunscreens this is not one of them so great if you have medium skin tones this may even work for you if you have deep skin tones because it blends in nicely not for you if you are fair to light unless you need some help like I just described the last thing I want to make sure I'm bringing up about this sunscreen is how it reapplies throughout the day. I don't have clips here of reapplying this sunscreen because I hate the way that this reapplies throughout the day. I mean, you guys saw, even with that second application, it does add a good amount of coverage and color. So I think as you can imagine, as you continue to do that throughout the day, it just starts to get gross. At least it did for me. This is actually the first mineral sunscreen that I had ever tried. And using this to reapply when I was out in the sun in the summer, was so gross. I hated the way that it felt. It just started to feel super greasy. And because it has so much color to it and that level of pigment is pretty dark, I felt like it just did not look good on my skin. It just wasn't a nice seamless situation and continuing to add that level of pigment multiple times throughout the day, I feel like just ended up making my face look way too dark. So this is not a sunscreen that I personally would recommend for all day reapplication. I think if you're using it as your sunscreen underneath makeup like I just did and then use something else for reapplication or use this as one of your initial sunscreen applications and then reach for something else throughout the day, 
those are all ways that I think it would work really well. This also would be a great option if you're looking for something to help to cut the white cast from a mineral sunscreen, but I would not personally rely on this for all day reapplication. Again, unless, I was gonna say unless you're really dry, but I feel like it would start to cling on to dry patches. I don't know. That's my personal opinion. You guys will have to let me know if you use this for all day reapplication and what you think. But at least if you're outside in the summer months, no go on that. All right, you guys. So final thoughts on this La Roche-Posay tinted mineral sunscreen. Do I think it's a good option? Here's what I'll say. If you're looking for something that has a good level of tint to it, that has a nice feel on the skin, and that leaves your skin looking very glowy, I think it's a good option. I don't think it should be the only sunscreen that you rely on because again, there's no zinc oxide. We don't really have any amazing skincare ingredients in this formulation, and you can find that within other sunscreens. But also, this is so pricey, so I don't know. It's hard for me to recommend this because of that, and I'm definitely being more critical on this sunscreen than I am on some others, but even still, I've reviewed $10 sunscreens that have better ingredients and also just reapply nicer throughout the day. So going to be up to you. It's not a 100% no because it's not like this has horrible ingredients for your skin, but it's definitely not my favorite. And I have actually just a few tubes that I need to get through just that I had from before. And once those run out, it's not going to be a sunscreen that I repurchase. So that's everything that I have to say. Those are my final thoughts. You will have to let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think about the sunscreen? Is it your favorite? If it is your favorite, please don't be offended. We all have different skin types. We all have different preferences. And if you love this, I'm so glad it works for you. That's all I want. But otherwise, let me know your thoughts. Very curious. I hope that this was helpful for you guys. If there's anything else you would like me to review next on this channel, leave that in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and make sure to click on that notification bell so that you don't miss out on my next video because I upload three to five days a week. All right, that is everything. My next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.